Okay, so we have now shown how this Cobb Douglas production function uh, satisfies the properties that we're going to ask for for our uh, production function in the solar growth model. So continuing. So we're going to have some exogenous growth rates. We're going to assume that the labor force is going to grow at rate n. We're going to assume that productivity is going to grow at rate g and that capital is going to depreciate at rate at rate d. So uh, the first two seem very different from the last one, but it turns out that they all sort of reduce to, uh, they reduce little k in the same way. So informally here, let me just quick, oops, I have my uh, tablet is not plugged in. Let me quickly plug that in. So let me give you the intuition here. Okay, let's see here, am I drawing? I think so. Okay, the same. All right, so the intuition is that, uh, recall that little k is, well, let's say little kt. Ah, come on. <laughs> is equal to big K of T divided by A of T times L of T. There's something wrong with my tablet. It's not picking up all the things. But anyway, so let's think about the way that this works, okay? So, I mean, I think we're going to be more form formal about this in just a moment. But uh, what's happening is that big K of T, that's disappearing with rate delta, okay? So that's going to cause this little KT to decrease. But then note that LT and AT are growing with rate N and rate G. So, you know, since they're in the denominator, the growth of those guys is also going to cause little KT to decrease. And in fact, it's going to be in a very similar fashion to the way that delta causes big kt to decrease. Okay, so actually, even though these seem different, uh, actually, they're all going to enter the same way into this expression for break-even investment. So on the next slide, what we're going to do is get a bit more formal about what we mean by a growth rate. You know, it seems sort of intuitive, but, uh, you know, what does that mean formally? that the growth rate is n or that the growth rate is g, g. Okay, so let's flip to the next slide here. So what we mean uh, when we say that uh, a grows at a constant rate g is that the change in a, so now we're introducing some new notation here. This, is, this dot notation formally means the derivative of a with respect to t. Okay, so we can say here the derivative of a t with respect to t is equal to the growth rate. So I'll put a little, or I'll say it's equal to a dot. This thing with my tablet is very annoying. I might pause in a second and try to figure out why it's doing this leg thing. That was a poor use of space. Let's try that again. A dot T is defined to equal the derivative of A with respect to T. Okay. So what we're saying here is that uh, the derivative of A with respect to T is going to be G times A T. Right. So if you think about it, in some senses, it's like a percentage growth. Um, you know, the, the bigger is A, the more A we get when we have a G fraction of A or a G times A. OK, and sometimes that's called exponential growth. And I'll show you why. So first of all, let's let's for no reason at all. Let's think about the derivative of the log of AT with respect to DT. OK, if we do that, then using uh, the Leibniz notation, we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by d of at, by the ch by the infinitesimal change in at. Okay. Um, and what we get is two terms now. You can see that the second term 
it's up here, is a dot t. And the first term is 1 divided by a t. Why is that? It's because the derivative of the log, you know, so the derivative of log x, derivative of log x, I have to write these really big because my uh, tablet for some reason has got a leg, and if I draw too small, then uh, it doesn't work. So the uh, derivative of log x with respect to x, it's a property of the log function, this is like something you have to memorize, is just 1 over x. Okay, so the derivative of a log at with respect to at is just 1 divided by at. Okay, and if you look up here at our definition of uh, g, basically g is equal to a dot t divided by at. Here we have a dot t divided by at. Okay, so you can see that the derivative of log at with respect to dt is equal to g based on our definition. This is really a definition of what a growth rate means. Okay, let me write that here, definition. Okay, so let's, let's play a little bit with this now. So uh, what you can see is the log of at I had to click my thoughts there a second before I started talking about this. But um, if you think about, say, taking, since we know that the log of at, uh, excuse me, the, the derivative of log at with respect to t is g, if we take the integral here of the log of at, then we're going to get, uh, if we take the integral on both sides, let me actually write it over here. So suppose we take the integral of d log at. Well, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to try to figure out if I can make my tablet work a little better here. Okay, it appears to be uh, working a little better now. So anyway, uh, you can see for some reason my lines are thinner. I have no idea what happened. I just closed the program and opened it again. But anyway, so here the, the derivative of the log of at with respect to dt. Okay, let's take the integral of this thing over dt. Okay, that's going to be equal to the integral of g dt. Okay, so we're integrating both sides. And what we're going to get is log of at, of course. That's the antiderivative. And then here, we're going to get g times t plus c, okay, where c is some constant. Okay. So if we set uh, t equal to 0 on both sides, then we're going to get that c is equal to uh, the log of a of 0. So I'm just going to rewrite that then. Log of a t is equal to uh, log of a 0, a of 0, plus g t. Okay. So that's what we get with this step here. And then without writing it, if we take if we exponentiate both sides, so we take the exponential function of both sides of this thing, well, exponential cancels out natural log. So on the left-hand side, we just get at. On the right-hand side, uh, once we take the exponential, uh, well, the exponential of log of a0, well, let me just, I'll just write this. Okay, so let's take the exponential of both sides. So exp. log of at, yeah, let's write that a little cleaner, log of at is equal to exp log a of 0 plus gt. Okay, so since exp is just taking e to the power of this thing here, you know, we have e to the sum of, e to the power of a sum, we can split that into exp of log of a of 0 and exp of gt, okay? So uh, form, so we can rewrite this as a of t is equal to, I'm not going to split the x because I don't have room down here, but the first one here, we're going to cancel out the logs. We're going to get a of 0. And then uh, since we have exp of log of a 0 times exp of uh, gt, then we're going to have exp 
of gt. Okay, and since x of gt is just e to the power of gt, that's how we get this expression here. Okay, so what you can see is uh, by assuming that the growth rate is g, we get exponential growth. You know, formally, what we mean by the growth rate of g is is that a is growing exponentially, uh, and then you know with this form. Okay, so what is a at time t? It's going to be whatever a was at time zero, our initial condition, times e to the power g t. Okay. So that's the meaning of the growth rate. So I guess we started here with this definition. This was our definition. And then we can derive that this is really exponential growth. So I'll stop there before I move on to the next slide.